Within every Ironman athlete, there's a desire to reach the summit, to climb higher than they ever thought possible. This desire is what keeps them going through the lowest valleys and what lifts them up and helps them go beyond their limitations to push through the impossible looking incline and along the long, relentless road. Swim 3.8 kilometers, bike 180 kilometers, run 42.2. That climb towards the finish line takes place in the shadow of Whistler Blackcomb, through Pemberton, and into the heart of Whistler Village. Their summit awaits. This is Subaru, Ironman Canada. Anyone for body marking? Feeling good today? As good as it can. Nervous as an inch of this. You've done it before, but uh, that fear and facing that fear is why we keep keep coming back. The sport's biggest names have won here in the past. Canadian Jeff Simons, the 2014 runner-up, and Australian Paul Ambrose, 30 years ago, are both back. Part of a deep pro field, looking to add their names to that illustrious list. American Liz Lyles is being targeted as the one to beat in the women's race. However, there is an Ironman rookie drawing attention as well. Canadian Melanie McQuaid is a three-time Xterra Triathlon world champion. Now, she looks to win an Ironman. Professional, amateur, they are all together as the start draws near. Thank you, my dear, thank you, thank you. <laughs> On the morning of race day, there's a million thoughts going through your head, did you do everything you could? Did you practice long enough? Did you work hard enough? Did you get your nutrition? But then you know it's today, and you uh, just think it's going to be a great day. You can feel the energy. Uh, there, there's energy, there's excitement, anxiety, and it's just it's a ball of emotions right right here. Uh, and it, it's exciting. It gets you, it gets you going. The heart rate's already up, and we haven't even started yet. Three and a half years ago, Eric McIlvenny lost his leg below the knee to an IED explosion in Afghanistan. In hospital, making it to the starting line of an Ironman became his focus. Now, it is a way of life for the three-time finisher. Good luck to you, sir. Yeah, thanks very much. Good luck. Yeah, all the best to you. This was the goal, to get here. Don Konitz's world changed when he was told he had cancer. It has been a four-year battle with more to come. Competing as an Ironman was a lifetime dream. Today, that dream will become a reality. My game plan is to, uh, to go out and just revel in the start and, um, and then just take it one step at a time, one foot in front of the other. That's, uh, that's, that's what it's been the last four years. That's what I've learned through this whole journey and uh, I'm looking forward to just taking it one step at a time. At that moment, once the wetsuit is on, once the goggles are on, once the hat's on, it's time to take a moment and just empty your mind and take it in and just breathe and say, I'm ready. I don't know what the day will bring, but I'll keep moving forward. No matter what, I'm going to keep moving forward. The move forward toward the finish line has begun. They have 17 hours to make it. Up front, the professional men. The best on the day still looking at more than eight hours of swimming, biking, and running. American Barrett Brandon is one of the sport's best swimmers. He has the lead but few expect it to last. Behind him, Australian Luke Bell, one of the seven men in the field that have won an Ironman.
Canadian Karen Thibodeau has often led in the water, off the bike, even in the run, but never when the race ends. Three times she has been the runner-up, including last year at Subaru Ironman Canada. Every race you enter, there's a shot. Uh, I've definitely picked a hard year to try to win. It's definitely the strongest start list there's ever been. There are so many dynamics involved in an Ironman, whether you're trying to win or simply trying to finish. Weather can be among the biggest factors of all. Unseasonably cool temperatures and rain have come into the area. They may be non-issues in the water, but once these athletes head out onto the bike, that will quickly change. This 2015 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru, confidence in motion, Timex, and by Tourism Whistler. Whistler Blackcomb. Its beauty legendary around the globe. The home to Subaru Ironman Canada is known as one of the world's top four season destinations. It is also located in the Pacific Temperate Rainforest. Most of the precipitation comes down in the winter, but not all of it. Heavy rain and cool temperatures, it is a daunting combination for these athletes. American Barrett Brandon and Australian Luke Bell will be the first to face the challenging conditions out on the bike. South African Kyle Buckingham can see them just a few seconds ahead. The three men with a big advantage over the chase pack. Barrett Brandon had Luke Bell on his toes the entire swim. He will head out onto the 180 kilometer bike alone. It's freezing. <laughs> I don't want to get cold. For Luke Bell, extra time taken during transition. Arm warmers, gloves, jacket. It's an effort to deal with the one thing that can't be controlled, the weather. South African Kyle Buckingham able to get by the Aussie in transition as he heads out now second. You're going to have to, I guess, plan accordingly because you don't want to end, end your day's racing right there out of the water by getting hypothermia and cold on the day. The main key things you think about when you get cold is your, your head, you know, your armpits, your toes and your hands. So you try and keep those things covered keep the core of your body warm enough so it can function and, and do the job that it's got to do. Australian Paul Ambrose exits in fourth. The Canadian Jeff Simons right with him. The duo more than three minutes off the pace. The leader, it is now the South African Kyle Buckingham. Barrett Brandon unable to match the pace up front as they head away from Whistler towards the climbs. A look at the top five out of the water. Barrett Brandon's 48-22 pulling the top three to a three minute plus advantage over the field. Kyle Buckingham will be the first to reach Callahan Valley and the 13 kilometer climb towards Mount Callahan. 500 meters of vertical climbing. Near the top, the Timex Supreme bonus. Barrett and Bell remain second and third, but they are losing time to the leader and to their pursuers. Ambrose is closing. Simon's cutting into the deficit even quicker. The runner-up from a year ago, part of a new group of Canadian men making their mark on the Ironman circuit. For nearly a decade, Canadian Peter Reed was the world's most feared Ironman competitor. During his eight-year reign, he amassed seven medals at the Ironman World Championship, including three golds. He really set the tone, and I think he really inspired a lot of us when we were coming up. He, he showed us what was possible. Um, so his legacy still lives on. Um, he was really the guy that uh, took it to a whole other level uh, and, and put Canadian Ironman athletes on the world stage. His retirement in June 2006 left a huge void, but the Canadian men are back in a big way. We are definitely seeing like a tsunami wave of Canadian men who are just doing so well uh, on the Ironman 70.3 circuit. I mean, there's five, six, seven guys uh, who can show up to any Ironman uh, or 
any 70.3 in the world and win it. Jeff Simons is one of the leading forces for the Canadian men. The 27-year-old outdueled a stacked field earlier this year, taking the win at the Ironman Asia Pacific Championship. It's pretty special winning in Melbourne, being the, the Asia Pacific Championship. It, uh, you know, just the hype and everything and the magnitude, uh, the coverage, just to see it on the grand scale. The victory came with an automatic qualification to the Ironman World Championship. It will be his debut on the Big Island, where Reed will always be remembered. It's going to be pretty special going to Kona and, and representing Canada and just representing the people back home that have helped me over my career and getting there. But first, some unfinished business right here for the 2014 Subaru Ironman Canada runner-up. Last year, what he did here, particularly on the run course, uh, would have won him 9.9 .9 out of 10 Ironmans on the planet. Subaru Ironman Canada was the race on my schedule that was like circled, starred, you know, arrows, whatever you want to do. This was, this was the race I really wanted to nail this year. The Squamish Lillooet Cultural Centre in Whistler opened up their door to us for this interview and much more. The two unique nations continue to be important partners at Subaru Ironman Canada since the race moved here in 2013. Laurel Wassner may have been second out of the water, but she has made up those three seconds and more in transition as she heads out onto the bike with the lead. Fellow American Liz Lyles would also get by the swim leader, Canadian Karen Thibodeau, in transition as the pair head out just 20 seconds behind Wasner. Back at the water, the quickest of the amateurs and the chase pack of professional women continue to exit the water as the rain continues to fall. Laurel Wasner with the early push as she would extend her lead on the bike. Karen Thibodeau has raced this bike course before. It is considered among the world's toughest, patience, can pay dividends later on. For Liz Lyles, a first time coming to Canada, but the two-time Ironman champion feels right at home in the mountains. I train really often in the Lake Tahoe area, and I've done Ironman Lake Tahoe, which had a substantial amount of climbing as well. I just like the challenging bike courses and kind of feeling like being in the trees and being in kind of the great outdoors. Canadian Melanie McQuaid set to join Lyles and the other women on the bike. Her deficit, just over three and a half minutes. Liz Lyles and uh, Kate Snow have better marathons than I could probably ever hope to have. So there's no question I need to be well in front of them. My physiology is just, I, I can ride really hard for a long time. After the swim, it was Karen Thibodeau, followed by Waster, McQuaid, Lyles, and Caitlin Snow in fifth. But on dry land, it changes. As the professionals continue moving into the second discipline, most of the amateurs continue to work through the 3.8 kilometer swim here at Subaru Ironman Canada. They are coming out in full force now. The amateurs continuing to finish up the first of three disciplines here at Subaru Ironman Canada. Among them racing in the 30 to 34 age group, Retired U.S. Marine Eric McIlvaney. On his third and final tour in Afghanistan, McIlvaney was wounded after stepping on an IED, resulting in the amputation of his right leg below the knee. After I was injured, I had a physical challenge. And it was a little emotional and mental as well. I, I didn't know what the next step was, but, but I knew I wanted to get back to an active lifestyle. I was looking for something that would be extremely challenging. Yeah. And in my head, I didn't know, I'd never done endurance sports, but an Ironman popped in my head and I was like, that's it. I, I knew that that was gonna help me recover and that was gonna make me active again. When I wake up in the morning, I, I put my left shoe on, I put my right leg on and, and I go about my day. 
from my injury to the Ironman was 22 months. There were a lot of triathlons. There was uh, some great times, some frustrating times, a lot of learning. It was an amazing journey. And then getting to race in Kona at the Ironman World Championships was, was so special. The race was really challenging, but crossing that finish line, uh, it, you know, I can't, I can't put the, the emotions into words, what, what it felt like coming across that line. The chills running down my body, and uh, it, it was just an amazing, amazing experience. Running that Ironman was just a, such a confidence builder for me. It, it was like I set a goal, and then I did it. And if I, if I could do that, I could do anything. Through these individuals like Eric, you're seeing them out doing extraordinary things like the Ironman Triathlon. I think it gives people hope when they're sitting there maybe down and out and depressed. And you have run legs now that are developed off of the cheetah, the fastest land animal on earth. And what they're using is carbon fiber and layering that carbon to have maximum deflection and energy return. So the technology now has caught up very closely to the human leg below the knee or uh, the loss of a limb. Well, the future right now is you're looking at very efficient software and microprocessor knee systems. You're looking at feet that actually produce power off of the toe. What they've done in the past 10 years has enabled me and so many other men and women to, to be active and, and live uh, very active lives, compete in sports that, that no one would even really think about. Opportunities are endless. I never would have guessed that, I, that I'm, I'd be a triathlete and an Ironman. I never would have guessed. McIlvaney was just over an hour in the water, 29th place out of 148 in his very competitive age group. His sights set on finishing in less than 12 hours. 180 kilometers, the next discipline to overcome. It includes three kilometers of vertical climbing. But on this day, with these conditions, the athletes will also be concerned with the numerous descents. Don Conance is out in the elements as well. Following performance diminishing cancer treatments, he could barely walk around a block. Now, he is tackling the toughest single day endurance event in the world. I saw cancer as an, an impenetrable wall, an impossible mountain to climb. Over the time period that I've been battling this, I've learned that maybe it's best to, rather than see it as a struggle for survival, to maybe um, see it as a driving force in my life. And so it's really motivated me. The human spirit. Motivation for all of us. New York's Laurel Wassner continues to lead for the professional women. However, behind her, things are quickly changing. Canadian Melanie McQuaid and American Liz Lyles have both moved past Karen Thibodeau. As the pair continue to close in on the later, McQuaid with the move past Lyles and into second place. South African Kyle Buckingham will capture the $1,000 Timex bike preem. 33 kilometers into the ride, he continues to open up his advantage. Now, over two minutes. I still thought Luke was ahead. Oh, I can't see him. Where is he? I got to the Timex uh, bike bonus, and I was like, oh, I just missed it by one person. And then I got to the turnaround, and no one was there. I was like, oh, I am in the lead. <laughs> Buckingham had passed Bell in transition. Bell has held down second most of the ride. Although the three-plus minute advantage over the chase pack is evaporating. The biggest challenge at this stage hypothermia. Of course, uh, before the race, I understood very well uh, Luke and uh, another couple very good uh, swimmers will be ahead. And uh, it was a surprise when we caught uh, 30 kilometers. We just caught these guys, they just frozen. Before the race, very good was idea, plastic bag where I was armor and gloves. I put it in under my uh, shirt. You know, it was really cool. Nine-time Ironman champion, 42-year-old veteran Viktor Zemetsev has seen pretty well every possible condition. This as challenging as any. Luke Bell heading back down. The Australian's still on the course, but indications are he is done for the day.
Laurel Wassner, the first to reach the Timex bike preem for the women. It is a few more minutes to the top, and then the turnaround back down to the Sea to Sky Highway. Melanie McQuaid has erased almost all of her three and a half minute deficit out of the water. Now just 30 seconds back and closing. Luke Bell already out due to the cold. We can add the pre-race favorite, American Liz Lyles to the list, as she abandons the race as well. That moves Canadian Karen Thibodeau into third place, the runner-up a year ago. Two minutes, 30 seconds off the lead. And last year's third place finisher, American Mackenzie Madison, another minute back in fourth. Followed by Australian Jessica Fleming, her deficit out of the water cut from seven minutes to five. I got on the bike and I was so cold. It was, it was probably the coldest I've ever felt in a race. For me, it was torture. I could not feel my fingers or I had cramping in my legs. I think that was from the cold. The temperature, about 10 Celsius. On the descents, the wind chill making it feel far worse. Laurel Wassner in the early stages of this descent. As soon as we came to the turnaround, all of a sudden that gap just evaporated and I caught her immediately. And um, as we were coming down Callahan and I caught up to her, I was yelling at her because I didn't have any brakes at all on any of those sections. I, they just were just so wet or my hands were frozen or whatever it was. I was just having sections where I knew that I was not going to be able to slow down very fast. McQuaid safely passed Wassner and into the lead. The DNFs continue to pile up. Jeff Simons is done. Paul Ambrose is in the back of an ambulance dealing with hypothermia. Karen Thibodeau heading back to Whistler to pull out as well. Finally, the rain beginning to move out of the area as Subaru Ironman Canada continues. Rain or shine, Whistler, BC one of the most picturesque places in the world. The 2015 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru, Confidence in Motion, Segoy, and by Tourism Whistler. He took the lead almost immediately on the bike. Since then, he has continued to open up his advantage on the remaining men. Four of the top five men after the swim are now out of the race. The sole survivor, Kyle Buckingham. The South African turned professional in 2014. In his pro debut, he placed second at Ironman South Africa. He followed that up by winning Ironman Lake Placid. Ironman Lake Placid One year later, he is in position to take his second Ironman victory. But the chase group contains some athletes who already have multiple titles. Chris McDonald holds down second, four minutes back. The Australian is a seven-time Ironman champion. Next is the top American, Derek Garcia, currently in third. A little further back, Victor Zemetze, a 42-year-old with nine Ironman victories. American Justin Dare in this group as well. The 2014 Ironman Boulder champion, now fourth following the pass on Zemetza. Changes further up as well. Derek Garcia with the move on McDonald as the American from Coeur d'Alene, Idaho takes over second place. The professional men all heading back towards Whistler as they hit the last series of climbs. While the exchanges take place in the chase group, Buckingham continues to slowly pull away. The marathon still to come. Canadian Melanie McQuaid, Ironman rookie, three-time Xterra champion, women's leader. She is the X Factor at Subaru Ironman Canada. I think I'm probably more of a threat than some other people think I am. So I certainly am going to go out there and make sure that I get the most out of myself on the day. And I would say that at this point in my career, I've never been stronger. I certainly think if you laid everyone's training logs and ability side by side, I think I have the physical ability to do it. It's just I'm lacking the experience of some of the, the girls in the field. And there are some really great, amazing athletes. Behind McQuaid, three women. American Daniel Mack in the red, the Australian Jessica Fleming, and Mackenzie Madison, third here a year ago. 
they will look to limit their losses on the bike. It is a four minute deficit, but to this point they have not been able to stop it from growing. Mack dropped back into third by Fleming. There are critical moments in every athlete's race. Daniel Mack going through one with more than an hour still remaining on the bike. Mackenzie Madison's pace beginning to slow as well. She has lost touch with the other women as she works her way alone in fourth. Up front, the Canadian continues to extend her lead. Melanie McQuaid has proven herself among the world's best triathlon cyclists. What she has not proven is that she can run a marathon. She will soon get that chance. For nearly 180 kilometers, Kyle Buckingham was all alone out front. He has built a commanding lead. He has the marathon remaining to see if it's enough. Chris McDonald with a late push. Derek Garcia trying to keep pace. The pair will be the first ones to take up pursuit of Buckingham on the run. I knew I had somewhere close to like five minutes. So I carried on running for the first two or three kilometers. I couldn't feel my front of my toes. The Australian Chris McDonald hits T2. His deficit to the South African, five minutes, 12 seconds. American Derek Garcia and Ukrainian Viktor Zemetsev. Less than a minute behind McDonald. Six minutes back of the leader. We come into transition and I caught back up to Chris. Victor had caught back up to me. And so I felt like it was important for me to get up quickly and just match pace right away. And, and both guys looked very strong right away. And so I was just trying to assess how I was feeling, but also you are having that mindset thinking through, I wonder how they're feeling. Because I felt as though Victor uh, during the bike looked like he was struggling a little bit. On the run, Zemetsev no longer looking like he's struggling. The nine-time Ironman champion quickly into the rhythm that earned him nine Ironman titles. Garcia already passed. McDonald in his sights. All the while, Buckingham continues to move towards the finish line. Second and third place, gone in an instant. Everything coming apart for the seven-time champion. Cold weather, flies up from boots and hamstring. That's killing me. Garcia, unable to stay with the charging Zemetsa. The Ukrainian making an early push. One man left to catch. The second year pro trying to hold off one of the sport's most decorated Ironman athletes. The amateurs continuing to work away on the bike here in Whistler as Subaru Ironman Canada continues. Now this is Ironman number two. I was here last year when it was 90 degrees. I think this is better. Although this downhill looks pretty scary. For the top professional women, the very tough bike coming to an end. Kyle Buckingham built a commanding lead in the men's race, almost an identical scenario for Melanie McQuaid in the women's race, as she moves through the final discipline. I, I don't know how to run a marathon, never run one, never even run more than 30 ever in my life. So I know it's gonna be hard, but um, as far as I can see, Ironman is a war of attrition. and. Um, I'll just go out there and try and get the most out of myself on the day. Everybody thinks that, no, she's a mountain biker. She can't run a marathon. So, you know, I'm kind of like, yeah, that's kind of true. A mountain biker shouldn't be running marathons, but this one's gonna try. The first women that will try to track her down are into T2. American Danielle Mack, Australian Jessica Fleming. The pair will head out onto the run course together, just over five minutes back. It is McQuaid, Mack, and Fleming, followed by Americans Jesse Donovan and Mackenzie Madison, more than 10 minutes off the pace. 
Daniel Mack opening up an advantage on Jessica Fleming. But the two-time Ironman champion continues to lose time to the leader. Everything hurts. Your feet hurt, your legs hurt, your brain hurts because <laughs> you have to stay focused and thinking the whole time. And your nervous system is just kind of off kilter because you've got so many emotions running through your mind of excitement and agony and it's just mind baffling. Your body doesn't really know how to handle it all. I kind of just went by heart rate all day. I was running at my, pay, my target heart rate, but I was running four minute kilometers. Now, I'm not running, so I don't know what the heck I was thinking. It was a pretty consistent uh, feedback that I was losing time, and significant time. McQuaid making it clear that despite this being her first Ironman, she was here to win. Whether it's to win or to make it to the finish line before the midnight cutoff, every Ironman athlete has their story, the reason for being here. That's a hard ride, that end. That was good, though. For Eric McElvenny, this has become part of who he is. Completing an Ironman was a dream that helped him endure his long recovery following an IED explosion while serving his country in Afghanistan. I can run, I can jump, I can bike. I, I feel able-bodied and there's just there's so many people in, in the age group that I, I like racing with. You know, I, I like, you know, some of them I can, I can beat, some of them I can't, I can't touch, but it's fun to be in that race and, and to be there and to be part of uh, just the triathlon world in general. McIlvenny is out onto the run course in the top 25 of 148 athletes in the men's 30 to 34 age group. Well on his way to completing his fourth Ironman. Don Conance will be heading out onto the run course as well. It's an incredible undertaking for anyone. Thank you. But to do this while battling cancer, almost unimaginable. I was born in central Canada and I was raised on fresh air and prairie values and uh, I had a very active lifestyle. I was uh, 48 at the time. Uh, four young kids at home, uh, busy work life, and, uh, and the doctor says, you've got prostate cancer. I had this image of my life's blackboard and with all the hopes and dreams that I'd hoped to achieve, and it just was like everything just fell off right then. I ended up having surgery within 30 days. It looked good at the start, but when the pathology came back, it was more aggressive than we thought and it had metastasized to my lymph nodes. I started on a, a series of two drugs and a cartridge in my stomach. That went on for about six months and that got the cancer to a level where I could get uh, qualify for radiation. You're in there alone and the lights turn red and this machine starts moving around and it's a very disconcerting experience. I ended up doing the, the Grouse Grind and climbing Grouse Mountain. It's about 2,500 vertical feet and about just over a mile in length. And it's known as sort of Mother Nature's Stairmaster. And it was just, it felt so fantastic to get to the top of the mountain. And the next day I went and did it again and, and I thought, I want to do this, I want to do this every day. And I remember my doctor taking uh, my wife, Catherine, aside and saying, you know, make sure he knows that this is, this, he's not going to be able to do that. And when she told me that, I mean, it just made me double my efforts. And I, st I went slower and slower. Everybody would pass me. But, uh, but on the last day, all of my family and friends came out and we all climbed the Gross Mountain together. And it was just fantastic. I think for him, it was partly just to, to say, I'm still here. I'm still fighting. I'm still capable of doing things. I, I'm not, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to do everything I can. To, to beat this disease. Cancer is what's brought me to this Ironman. I mean, this is why I'm here today, to really take the ultimate physical test and to see how I can do. I feel like I've been walking around this mountain for the last uh, few months, looking up at it, and now, Sunday, it's time to run up it. So, yeah, I'm nervous. 
when he crosses that line, the, it's just going to be an overwhelming emotion because of what he managed to achieve. The finish line is a very distant goal that I hope to reach, but the start line is the one that I'm really focused on. I think Ironman is just an opportunity to have a completely new view of life, and I'm really looking forward to that. With every stride, Don Conan's that much closer to the finish line. He has led almost the entire race. For nearly six hours, Kyle Buckingham has been on his own. He had built a commanding lead on the bike. On the run, that advantage coming unraveled. Victor Zemetsev took over second place early into the marathon. Since then, he has been relentless in his pursuit of Buckingham. The South African will push on towards the finish line with the lead. However, almost half a marathon remains. In third place, Derek Garcia beginning to struggle as well. Fellow American Justin Dare moving past Garcia and into a podium position. Like Zemetsev, he too is gaining on the leader. Kyle Buckingham now in the sights of nine-time Ironman champion Victor Zemetsev. Yeah, big lead, but somebody gave me a split like six minutes uh, ahead. This was a surprise because I caught him so quick just after one loop. It's a quick look back, but it's enough to see that Zemetsev is now just a few strides behind. He was running behind me and I thought, oh, he's not overtaking me yet. So maybe he's hurt, maybe he's starting to hurt. I try to stay behind him or be ahead, you know, it's like, it was little game. It would appear to be an unusual game being played out. Seldom does an athlete take back six minutes without immediately taking over the lead. Perhaps even more surprising to see an athlete go from walking at an aid station to this. One thing is clear though, the race for the win is right here with these two men. The 2015 edition of Subaru Ironman Canada is brought to you by Subaru, confidence in motion, Timex, and by Tourism Whistler. For the first half of the marathon, Melanie McQuaid had been adding to her advantage over Danielle Mack. The Canadians starting to give back those gains and more. Five minutes up after the bike, a little more than six at one time on the run, now just over four minutes. The numbers beginning to turn in favor of the American. Back to the men. Kyle Buckingham has responded to the challenge from Viktor Zemetsev. The pair now locked into each other's rhythm, matching each other's stride for stride. It's now a battle of wills between two men who have never raced each other before. When we ran together, I feel when we did some uh, climb up uphill, very hard breathing, uh, Kyle. You know, understand? I need just uh, push a little bit harder. He actually started running in front of me at about 26 kilometers, and he broke away. And he broke away by about 100 meters. But after one loop, I get very big uh, hit the wall. You know, sore was in the legs. And then I saw him uh, struggling a little bit towards the turnaround. And when I saw that, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna sprint back up to him. And at the turnaround, I was probably 10 meters behind him. And I think he got a little bit of a shock because he, I, I don't think he was realizing, oh my word, he's still there. And I understand, I need to stay together to maybe three, two kilometers before the finish line attack. I just kept having, I just kept pushing kilometer by kilometer and it worked, I just kept doing that in my mind. At uh, 28 kilometers I made a surge up one of the climbs and I thought I gapped him, I thought oh, I've got it, I think I've got it, I think I've got him yeah because he's hurting, he slowed down. Zemet said may have been hurting but he was far from done. Buckingham had survived an attack earlier Zemetsev able to take the counter punch. The two closing in on an hour, going toe to toe. 
Melanie McQuaid, holding on to the lead, has made the final turnaround. Now heading back to the finish line. Daniel Mack has reached that turnaround as well. Both women now know what the gap is. So at the turnaround, she came by me and she was looking strong, poised. I knew I was gaining. My husband said, you're doing it. You just got to keep your pace. You're going to make it. And um, inside, I was like, whew, I don't know if I can. This is, she is pushing me to my absolute limits. I knew that Danielle was closing the gap. And my last ditch attempt was to pick up my cadence and I had brought a tempo trainer, it's like a metronome, so I could try and take quicker steps. Win or lose, I knew that I had to be super excited about my race because I had given it everything I had. It was going to be memorable no matter what. The pair on a collision course, Mac gaining with each stride, McQuay trying to make it to the finish line before her advantage is gone. If both women are able to hold their pace, this one will be very close. Welcome back to Subaru Ironman Canada from Whistler, British Columbia. When a race takes nearly nine hours to complete for the fastest on the day, seldom does it come down to the final few kilometers, but this one has. 42-year-old Viktor Zemetsa from the Ukraine and the South African 31-year-old Kyle Buckingham had been in a two-man battle for the past hour. What was going through my head the whole time, this is going to be a sprint finish. I know it is, I've got a feeling it's going to be a sprint finish. Zemetsev with his own thoughts on a slight incline, a gap beginning to open up. Uh, yeah, I look back because maybe Kyle's start to attack is very painfully. They just uh, try to control what happens behind me. And at 40 kilometers, it, my legs just totally seized up. I couldn't, I couldn't run. And he's still 30 seconds up the road. Zemetsev felt the climb to the place where Buckingham was vulnerable. The nine-time Ironman champion seizing on the opportunity to make his move. Zemetsev is the victor on this day as he takes his 10th Ironman title with his win here in Whistler at Subaru Ironman Canada. One of the closest finish ever at one of the world's oldest Ironman events. Kyle Buckingham put everything he could into this one, an incredible performance to take second place. Just 44 seconds separating the two top men. American Justin Deere with a solid day as well as he moves up on the run from fifth place to third. Victor Zemetsev with the win, followed by Buckingham, Dare, Derek Garcia in fourth, and Chris McDonald able to fight his way to the finish line in fifth. Melanie McQuaid is still out front for the women. However, her lead now down to mere seconds. Daniel Mack has tracked her down. When I saw her, I knew that, wow, if I can make up six and a half minutes on a run, I have to go by her with a major surge. With 4K to go, I had nothing. I had no response to Danielle catching me. I had totally blown it in terms of pacing, and I was very tired. And it was 12 kilometers further than I'd ever run in my life. I went as fast and as hard as I could, and I didn't know if she was hanging with me or it was right behind me. To be honest, I didn't even really celebrate and take the last mile in the way I wanted to because I was running scared. In the finish shoot, Daniel Mack from Arvada, Colorado, finally able to take it all in. Mack is the 2015 Subaru Ironman Canada champion. And what a debut for the Canadian. An incredible effort by Melanie McQuaid from Victoria, BC, as she completes her first ever Ironman with a second place finish. And more to cheer about for the Canadian crowd. 
Jen Annette with the professional women's best marathon time on the day as the Penticton BC athlete crosses the line in third. Danielle Mack with her second professional Ironman title, just over two minutes ahead of McQuaid, followed by Annette, Mackenzie Madison, and Jessica Fleming in fifth. The remaining hours belong to the amateurs as they continue to push towards their finish. This a culmination of months, even years of effort, time, and commitment. It's going pretty good, we're getting close. I'm feeling all right, actually. I'm just about out of gas. I think I'm gonna bring it home. The finish line. It signifies the end of the race. A brief moment in a very long day. But for those who have been able to make it here, this is everything. Eric McElvenny has experienced this feeling before. Some things never get old. 11 hours, 22 minutes, 44 seconds. Incredible. Imagine not being able to walk around the block while undergoing cancer treatments to this, completing your first Iron Man. One, two, three, there are more battles ahead, more cancer treatments to endure, but not on this day. Today, Don Conant, you are an Iron Man. So elated, I wanted to change the story and uh, I wanted to change my story and also uh, there's just so many people that are in bed and at home battling cancer and, and this was for them. This was for them.